Howdy folks. Today I'm going to be checking the vibration on my spindle on the Tormach 770. That'll be a good height. All right, guys, we're back at the computer now. I've got all the data dumped and let's uh, take a look at what we were seeing. I know it's basically a lot of squiggly lines. What I'm really looking for is to figure out which one I need to take a closer look at. We have certain frequencies pegged here. We don't need these as that's the spindle itself. Let's get rid of those electrical frequencies to see what is dominant here. I have noticed that there is a little bit of speed difference in the spindle versus what it should be driving the motor at. The, uh, the VFD doesn't drive the motor at the at, at the uh, controlled speed, and I'm sure that's due to slip. It happens in AC motors, especially <coughs> cheap ones. <coughs> Tormac cheap cheap motors. Um, <laughs> uh, of course, I didn't buy the mill because it was expensive. We're getting real close some, to some uh, defect frequencies here. That is our turning speed. And I don't like that we have these other frequencies out here that are almost as high as our turning speed. And that's the spindle motor. Let's look at the spindle itself. That was the vertical axis. Yep, there we go. Get rid of electrical. We do have some bearing defects showing up real low. Some motor bearings out of here. As you can see, right in here, we do have a couple peaks and ball spin. Fundamental train, fortunately, is okay. I'm only worried about the 706 and the 707 as that's what the uh, Tormach uses in the spindle itself. And as you can see, we're getting some, it's real close. It's not dead on, but like I said, the driven speed is not entirely correct. As you can see, I was getting 9960 whenever it was commanded for 10K. So that's going to throw off the calculations slightly. 
and I really don't like that we have these peaks out here anyway even if I don't have a frequency designated for that to be a fault because you shouldn't be seeing that. Let's take a look at the spindle side, the, the, the tool side of the spindle. And this is what I do for a living, folks. This is, uh, I sit around, push buttons, click mouses on a computer. I have way too many faults brought over into this one, but this was hastily built database so that I could get this looked at. And overall, we're looking at, these have got to go, I want the overall amplitude on this. Now yeah, we're looking at six G's of acceleration and that, that's way too much in a tool spindle. All in all, other than these waveforms here, what does it mean, big picture? You know, the big picture is telling me that the spindle motor itself is making some racket. It's telling me that I do have some bearing wear. I have a raised noise floor down here. Not happy with, with it. But the bearing's gonna last a while. I, I'm, I'm gonna continue to monitor them because I can probably on a monthly basis uh, if this was a customer machine I would tell them you know quarterly to be on the safe you know at least twice a year just to uh, at the bare minimum but uh, I, I have the uh, ability to monitor it regularly so I'll keep them keep an eye on these trend it out see how it's doing. I'm going to plan to replace the bearings in the future. And uh, until then, I'm gonna keep an eye on the run out. I've already checked the run out. The uh, test indicator I was using has a half a thousandths, so five tenths. It has five tenths accuracy, and I was not noticing any discernible movement on it. Uh, the big thing's gonna be to run some parts on it now that I got it moved and set up and to see how the tolerances are, how the finishes are, you know, if I'm getting chatter when I shouldn't be getting chatter on a finish cut where I haven't gotten it before, then that's going to tell me there's some looseness in there that is going to have to be uh, dealt with sooner. And that will probably be the driving factor as that typically is on tool machines. You know, you start seeing it in your finish before you get anywhere near to the end of the life of the bearings because the tolerances open up, but the bearings can still take it for a while. Uh, you know, a hydraulic pump, they'll sit there and rattle themselves to death pretty much and uh, still pump. Whereas a tool machine, you know, you want to, you're looking for a surface finish and you cannot maintain accuracy with any looseness in the bearings. So that's going to be the real driving factor and that's what we're going to do. So. I'll keep you abreast of what's going on and uh, give you some updates in the future as we do more of this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Subscribe. I've got some cool stuff coming up with forks axis and whatnot, so uh, we'll see you in the next videos.